So in today's video, I'm gonna go over my top co-angler etiquette tips for when you're fishing in a bass tournament. Stay tuned, it's coming up. Alrighty y'all, Lou here from Beyond the Bounds. This is a channel geared towards bass fishing, gear reviews, tournament footage, tips and tricks, everything that has to do with bass fishing. So if you like that sort of thing, click that subscribe button down below. Let's get into today's video, which is talking about some of my top tips for co-anglers on the back of someone else's boat. Now guys, I'm putting all of these top co-angler tips and tricks, techniques, things like that into a single playlist. And you know, you'll be able to watch this entire playlist, get an idea of what it's like to go to your first tournament, to prepare for that first tournament, what you need to bring. And you know, I'll go into some of that in this video, but check that playlist out for a list of items, for a list of videos that will help you uh, become a better co-angler and prepare for your next co-angling season. All right, now I'm definitely gonna get a few comments down in the comments section below about how I violated these co-angling tips and tricks that I'm giving you this etiquette uh, on the back of someone's boat. Yeah, that's absolutely gonna be true. I most certainly did. Uh, you saw one video out of quite a few in which I did that. And I left that in there because I'm truthful with the content that I bring out. I don't try to sugarcoat it. When I make mistakes, I make mistakes. And uh, you know, I'll actually address some of those in this list of items. So let's get going, let's get cracking on this list. Number one, guys, is to be prepared. I can't stress that enough. Like you're gonna be going onto someone else's boat and you need to have your gear, your tackle, you need to be ready to go, you need to be you know, knowledgeable on things like netting a fish. There's a lot that goes into this. And so you have to be prepared when you get on someone else's boat. Don't show up with you know, the lightest rain gear that you could possibly find going into a St. Lawrence River event at the end of September, beginning of October. All right, you're gonna freeze and you know, that's bad on you for not being prepared. Be also prepared to go into the tournament conditions that you're gonna be fishing. This is actually something that I learned towards the end of the year to where, you know, I saw other co-anglers show up to events, maybe even fly in the night before, right? It's a BFL versus a Costa kind of environment here and we're fishing a Costa. And a guy flies in, you know, talks to, to one of the boaters and expects this boater to basically give him all the information that he has now just spent a whole week gaining, right? Spent a whole week gaining, spent all of his money practicing for this event and a co-angler just comes in and is like, hey, yeah, give me all the information that you worked really hard for. No, guys, it's not gonna happen that way. Uh, so be prepared, uh, have the right weights, have the right tackle, so forth, right rain gear, right clothes, food, water, be prepared. Number two, definitely be on time. You know, sometimes you might be traveling with somebody, make sure you convey that to the boater beforehand. Make sure they know that, hey, I'm, I'm riding with this other guy, I'll be there as soon as he gets there, I can call you when I get there. So set that up ahead of time. Next on that list, guys, be upfront and honest. If you've never backed in a trailer, if you can't back in a trailer using the mirrors, a lot of these guys have caps on their trucks. You can't see out of the back. You have to rely on those mirrors. Most of us are pretty comfortable uh, backing in boats all by ourselves. We've been doing it quite some time. You know, I knew for me being a new co-angler uh, the past couple years, that was a little bit of a, a touchy situation, but luckily I had my own boat and was able to back in other people's trailers, no problem. But if you've never done that, you know, don't be holding people up at the ramp. Um, also, a little ramp etiquette there too. Uh, make sure when you're backing up, you turn off the lights. Just common courtesy there to do when you're backing someone else's boat up. But if you can't back it up, let them know. They'd probably much rather you, you know, take control of either trolling motor or something like that, or they'll just do it themselves. A lot of time they'll get there earlier. They'll already have the boat in the water by the time you get there, which is also something that you can take into consideration too, because you don't need to necessarily show up at that exact very moment that they do sometimes. You can maybe show up, you know, 30 minutes later. Again, like I said, it depends if you're riding with somebody else, let them know that. Also ask your boater if they need anything. You know, in the morning it's pretty hectic. They've probably stayed up all night rigging. They're tired. Uh, Again, they, they can be a bit cranky at times, but if you kind of follow these steps, you'll start off onto a really good track. Now, that's not to promise that the day's gonna go like cupcakes and rainbows for you, uh, because they've still got a plan, they're still trying to do what they're trying to do, and you're trying to catch fish behind them. But hopefully, at some point in the day, they will allow you to fish. To that point, ask him if he needs anything. Water, drinks, 
food, things like that can go a long way to, to just making this relationship start off on a good foot. Don't forget that you can always be the co-angler who brings ice as well. Okay, next on this list is going to be managing your tackle. I've already done a tackle bag video uh, of a good one that's pretty inexpensive, is small and compact, will fit into most compartments. I actually haven't ran into a single compartment yet that it won't fit into, but you know, keep it kind of concise, compact, and in the small area. Watch that video about a, that I did about you know my tackle bag that I use. It's not that I'm promoting it or anything. I just kind of want to show you how I manage my tackle and the things that I do on the water. Uh, for the most part that I kept a pretty clean workspace. I kept all of my stuff contained out of the way because that's the last thing they want guys. It's another thing to kind of tick them off would be to come down from the front deck, trip over something that's yours, you know, get a treble hook where it shouldn't be, a worm hook somewhere, you know, see your tackle spread out all over the place. You just need to mitigate those issues as best you can. Work on that relationship to, to make it the best that it possibly can be for that day. And that's gonna be kind of one of the hardest things to do as a co-angler is really to pare down your tackle uh, to the individual event. Um, if you're dialed in, you're dialed in. It makes it actually pretty easy. So if you get a chance to go out there and practice with someone, absolutely take advantage of that. I did that this year and it made a world of difference. Uh, you know, was able to really bring home uh, something good. And uh, the result of that was that I got to practice with somebody really good. And once I got in the right areas, I, I knew what I had to do from the back of the boat. All right, guys, probably the most important one. <laughs> Well, maybe not the most important one, but it is critical. Always, 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 always bring gas money, all right? Now, this is a question that gets asked, how much you know, should I bring, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, it's not that hard. These are 40 to 50 gallon tanks, you know, so it's gonna cost you anywhere from 120 or more to fill one of these things up. Um, and remember these guys have been running them all week. So, you know, that gas money does kind of help offset things. So in that same token, let me compare that to something else. Golf, for instance, uh, you know, if your buddy asks you to go out and so I'm gonna step away from the tournament side here, but if your buddy asks you to go out and to, to a game of golf, you know, you don't show up, use his clubs, use his cart and have him pay the course fees, the green fees. Um, so, you know, fishing's basically the same way, guys. Don't treat it like that, like, oh, it's just free day out on the boat. You know, I don't have to bring anything and it doesn't cost me any money. It's still costing that guy money to drive down there. It's still costing him money to run the boat. So, you know, pitch some money his way. I generally give my boaters $60. I've gone upwards to 80. Uh, so, you know, actually somebody asked if I tip my boater. Absolutely not. Another one is, would I split my winnings or give some of my winnings to a boater? Absolutely not. He's not gonna do that for me. I'm not gonna do that for him and I'm sitting there netting his fish. He's compensated for the extra money that he brought to the table. He gets compensated for the fact that it's his boat. He gets to fish the way that he wants, where he wants, how he wants. That's his extra compensation for that. Here's one that's kind of funny and maybe don't talk a lot. So that, that one's kind of touch and go. I mean, if you're fishing with your buddies, talk all daggum day. And it may seem different in my videos because I will say things specifically in my videos while I'm filming, while I'm in the tournament, so that there is actually some voice behind it. But please don't think for one minute that for eight hours a day, I sit there and jibber jabber the whole time. I absolutely do not in my videos. I, I try to keep it as quiet as possible. I'm back there trying to go to work guys. And you know, I'll say a few things here and there, talk to break the silence, maybe ask a question or so. But if he's quiet, I'm quiet. I've had boaters literally talk my ear off all day long, just up there constantly going, constantly chatting. It's their boat, I don't care. Makes for, a, makes for an interesting day. And I learned some things while he's talking, talking about his fishing, talking about what he might do next, talking talking through his thought process. You know, you sit there, you listen, you learn. I guess the, the additional part of that is one that I kind of broke this year because you kind of saw me get, uh, especially if you watch my backboated video, you saw me get angry. Uh, you saw me get frustrated. Uh, that's something that's absolutely gonna happen to you on the back of someone else's boat. You look at the results for a lot of the tournaments, there's a lot of blanks on the, on the co-angler side. There's a lot of one fish limits. There's a lot of zero fish limits. And that's just part of being a co-angler. And you're gonna get frustrated. And that's where you absolutely need to, you know, contain that, that anger, contain those emotions. Uh, which lead me into uh, 
the next one is really just to control your emotions, control your anger. That, that's going to be on you. You know, that's part of fishing. And I think that's part of competitive fishing is that you really have to maintain your emotions, whether you're on the front or the back. It's such a big mental game when you're not catching anything. When you're especially on the back, you're watching the guy up front catch fish after fish. He keeps positioning the boat to, to not allow you to fish something. Uh, which will happen. That happened to me. Yeah, I got mad and I said something about it. What was I going to do? There was no other way for me to get fish for the rest of the day. Uh, I'd do it again in that situation. And that's about the only situation that I've done that in the two years that I've been a co-angler. You know, if I get judged on that for that one time, that one time event, I'm fine with that because you know what? I still came home with four fish. He still put me on those fish. He still actually finally repositioned the boat to allow me to cast at something. All I'm saying guys is, is just control your anger, control your emotions, your frustration. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be cold. You're just gonna have to deal with it in the best way, best way possible. So the next one is to be prepared to sacrifice guys. You might have to stop fishing to get the net to get their fish. You might have a fish on and they fully expect you to land their fish over your fish. Uh, the other thing is if you get snagged up, they're moving pretty good and that's just a hook and a sinker, go ahead and break it off, all right? Because they'll probably turn around if it's a whopper plopper or a mega bass one, vision 110, you know, but if you're consistently getting hung up, consistently uh, having, stopping them in that sense, you're just gonna have to break off guys. There are gonna be plenty of times to where they're like, man, I don't, I'm not gonna ruin that area. You just need to break it off. Uh, so, you know, be prepared to sacrifice, make these small sacrifices throughout the day. Hopefully you don't have to do eight hours of continual sacrifice. You know what? That's just part of being a co-angler at times, which brings me to one of the last ones. This happened to me on the final day of Costa. Matter of fact, I was the uh, perpetrator in this instance. Uh, you know, I was back there. I had very limited time to, to try and catch some fish. We're flipping a mat and you know what? I pretty much got the back of that, of that, uh, Falcon pretty dirty. And you know what, I, I regret doing that. I regret leaving that boat in that condition because you know I was angry at the situation that I was in. I'd fished hard for several days on the final day of a coast. I've got zero fish. I've not been given a chance to get on any fish. And once I started finally catching fish, that was all I was focused on. Um, I knew that I had such a small window of opportunity to get in there and catch fish. You know, I let my anger get, get the best of me in that situation. It was a boat that my boater had actually borrowed from a friend. And if he does watch this, if I would say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, that I did that to your boat. I just didn't pick up after myself, guys. You need to pick up, pick up your soft plastics. I always clean out my soft plastics. I never leave anything of mine on the boat, wrappers, bottles, etc. Throw it all into my co-angler bag and I hoof it with me. Absolutely take care of their boat. Treat it like it's your own. You know, ask permission. Don't just sit there and light up a cigarette. That's a big no-no for a lot of guys. Don't just whip out the big box of, of dipping dyes and start going to town inside of the boat. You know, ask permission for those things. I always ask permission. Hey, do you mind if I film? 100% always do that. Some guys little on the wall with it. Some guys, hey, absolutely, no problem. Finally, down to the last one, which is another one that I did a complete video on. Just know that there are dividing lines in the boats onto where you can kind of cast as a co-angler. But majority of the time, even front of the console is actually in play. You just don't want to be firing something over somebody's shoulder. But you know what? I made a video about that, so give that a check out. Uh, you know, I'll drop the link down in the description, but it's also part of this playlist that I'm telling you about. Maybe flash a little picture of it right here. So, you know, check that out. Let me know what you think. So guys, I hope this is a good starter for you for your next season. This is based on some of the things that I've absolutely done. This is based on things that I've observed and it's based on things that I've been told by others. So, you know, guys, I hope this helps you out. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one.